resigned from the Los Angeles City Council. This came a few days after the world heard Nuri and other elected members of the council speak disparagingly about black people, indigenous people, and others. There's a white guy with a little black kid bouncing off the effing walls on the floor. There's nothing you can And what participants do. believe was a private conversation, racism, colorism, Homophobia and bigotry were exposed like never before. The effort to undermine the political influence of black fellow citizens was specifically targeted by these so-called leaders. Everyday people stormed the doors of City Hall demanding immediate resignations. Even the President of the United States called for resignations. On Thursday, October 12th, 5 to 7 p.m., KBLA Talk 1580 will host a day of dialogue on the anatomy of anti-black racism and bigotry in Los Angeles with an all-star panel of civic leaders. Don't miss this conversation. Thursday, October 12th, live from 5 to 7 p.m. with an encore performance from 7 to 9 p.m. only on KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk a lot about. To talk about. You ready? Come on. It's the queen of royal bands. It's time for the Rob Report with Robin A. Highlighting people and things you should know about. Robin's got you covered. Woo! Follow Robin at Robin Ayers. You're listening to the Rob Report on KBLA Talk 1580. Robin's got a lot to talk about. See, baby, I know you done had your share of girls, but I am more than confident you won't ever have to search these streets for affection. I got you. <laughs> What kind of girl you like? I know my looks can be deceiving. Tell me, am I your type? My main goal is to please you. What's on the schedule tonight? Am I the reason you'll be treated? I hope you have an appetite. So tell me where you come and spend the night. The Raw Report on KBLA Talk 1580, where we bring you the latest in entertainment news, trending topics, interviews, all that good stuff. I'm your host, Robin Ayers, with you Monday through Friday, 6 to 7 p.m. on that drive home. Uh, Happy birthday to Maya. Y'all remember Maya? Well, she is still around. She is still doing her thing. Libra gang gang. Okay. (laughs) Still Libra season, y'all. It's still Libra season. You will hear me say that. All the way until it's not, okay? Uh, My birthday is in a couple of days. Andy's birthday will be celebrating at the end of the month as well on the 23rd. So happy birthday to all of you Libras out there. And yes, happy birthday to Maya. We have a great show for you lined up. I'm really excited to get into this one for sure. Um, There are a couple of updates that I was going to tell you about, which, uh, number one, Justin Combs. If you remember, back in June, we talked about Justin Combs, who is the son of Diddy. Well, he has avoided, not surprisingly, he's avoided jail time. Are we surprised? Probably not. Um, <laughs> that's just the way it works. Um, we, you know, we don't know what's going to go on there, but uh, not surprised about that. I am excited about this one, though. Mary J. Blige, she created a $40,000 scholarship for sophomores at Hampton University. I'm excited for a couple of different reasons. Number one, we've been talking about the fact that a lot of people, a lot of women of color, uh, recently have been creating these scholarships and it's always it's always great to see that you know and maybe it's meaning a little bit more to me now that I have kids who are getting ready to enter into that college life it's probably meaning a lot more I don't know but um Women of color, I mean, just giving back. So, you know, shout out to Mary J. Blige for doing that. And she is creating the scholarship for sophomores, specifically sophomores at Hampton University. Another reason I'm excited is because my girls are interested in Hampton University. A Okay, <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, congratulations to their future winners over there. Also, I wanted to play for you... Um, There is a woman who called in and I'm so sorry. I don't know your name because she never she never told me her name. And actually, we'll we'll probably get to it in a little bit. But before we get to it, I will tell you that uh, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, you remember The Rock and Oprah. We did a whole show about it. The Rock and Oprah had created a 
fund, a relief fund for those victims over in Maui who they were, um, it was it was a challenge for them. They were suffering from the fires that were happening over there. And, um, you know, I, I believe so much is going on. A lot of things that are happening a lot better now. But, um, yeah, they created this fund. And a lot of people had some things to say that, you know, they just simply were not happy about. I will tell you that. And I, I sort of just stood up. To, for them I felt like you know what this is this was okay this was the, the you know the fact that they wanted to go ahead and put this out even though that they are speaking of Oprah and um and the and Dwayne the Rock Johnson even though they're multi-millionaires billionaires I still felt like it was okay to give other people an opportunity to um to you know extend their hospitality and their their resources if they wanted to so I didn't have a problem necessarily uh, with the fact that they went ahead and put it out but a, a lot of you did say you know you did not agree with that because times are hard and I do understand that but um, I have now heard the update from The Rock Johnson I'm actually going to play that for you on the other side but what he said was he basically heard you he heard you loud and clear he also said that he learns from the things that he does. And um, so he wanted to, I don't even, he didn't necessarily apologize. He just says that, you know, I hear you and I'm learning from this. So, um, yeah, he's he's going to figure out how to make way, how, how to do something like this better. So he heard you all loud and clear. Um, that's what I will say on that. Listen, if, if you were here yesterday and you were tuning in, and you accidentally tuned into the raw reporter. You were trying to get the raw report. You may have been met by the live streaming that was happening with Tavis Smiley and an entourage of incredible scholars and um, councilmen over here in Los Angeles. It was the tape that was playing the tape one year later. And when I tell you, I enjoyed so thoroughly that two-hour conversation. It was so great. I I would t definitely encourage you to go back on YouTube and find the tape one year later. It was a great conversation. It was uh, very insightful. And um, you, you should just watch it, especially if you live in Los Angeles. I think you would enjoy it no matter where you live. But if you are in Los Angeles, definitely go back and check it out. Um, hello to you all. I see you chiming in on YouTube already. That is great. If you want to call in and uh, weigh in on the conversations today, you can do that as well. 1-800-920-1580. We have got so much to talk about with our contributor who's on the line with us today. I want to go ahead and get into the Raw Report. Andy, let's go. Now it's time for a breakdown. Well, um, if you've seen, there is a lot of backlash going on. This is something that I want to break down and, and really discuss. Chris Rock, who we all know and most of us love, and he has been he has been loved for quite some time. Well, Chris Rock is being reported that he is now directing alongside Steven Spielberg the biopic for Martin Luther King Jr. A lot of people say. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right choice. I don't know if that's the way to go. Why are they saying this? We will talk about it. We'll break it down, see what other people are saying. We'll get to that. We're also going to get to the fact that Kayla Nicole, you may or may not know her name. She is a model. She is a fitness sort of guru. She's an intelligent, beautiful woman. And she's also the ex-girlfriend of NFL player, uh, Travis Kelsey. Now, Travis Kelsey is dating now or reportedly dating Taylor Swift. I know, big, big, big differences. Well, anyway, they are trolling Kayla Nicole online. They're comparing her and Taylor Swift. I feel unfairly. We're going to break down where that comes from, but also play an open letter from Kayla Nicole. It's a beautiful open letter to black women. Let's discuss how women are, are treated differently, how we are compared to other white women. We're compared when it comes to finances, when it comes to looks, when we talk about all that stuff. We're just going to break that down real, real good on the other side. You are listening to The Raw Report on KBLA Talk 1580. Stay right there. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Lil Real Howry. Right now, you're listening to KBLA Talk 1580. That's right. The Raw Report. You're inside The Raw Report, the Raw Report. with Robin Ayers on KBLA Talk 1580. 
Do you have both Medi-Cal and Medicare? If so, the new LA Care plan called Medicare Plus can help you get the most out of your health plan for zero dollars. LA Care provides personalized service to Angelinos like us. Plus, it gives us access to doctors and specialists across Los Angeles County. It's a plus. It's a plus for, for all, all of us. us. It's only October, but I'm already thinking about the holidays, specifically about how I always procrastinate on gift shopping, but not this year. With Kohl's three-day deal dash, I got 50% off an Amazon tablet, 20% off Lego sets, and 30% off a Crock-Pot slow cooker. Plus, I saved 20% on some of my gifts and got $10 off because I spent over $50. So, is it too soon to put up the tree? Select styles, Amazon and Lego coupons do not apply. $10 for $50 offer in deals and October 11th. 20% offer ends October 15th. See store or kohls.com for details. <coughs> Oh, this cold. Honey? <laughs> honey? Honey, you need DayQuil Severe Honey. DayQuil Severe Honey gives you powerful cold and flu symptom relief with a honey-licious taste. Because life doesn't stop for a cold. Okay, I'm ready to go. <coughs> <coughs> now I'm getting a cold. Honey? Try DayQuil Severe Honey for powerful cold and flu relief. DayQuil Severe with honey flavor. The daytime coughing, aching, stuffy head, fever, honey-licious, power through your day, medicine. Use as directed. Keep out of reach. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. KBLA Talk 1580, connecting you with services and solutions. South Central Youth Empowered Through Action is the youth component of the impactful CBO, known as the Community Coalition. South Central Youth Empowered Through Action has chapters at almost every South LA high school. Say Yeah, as they are properly known, is located at 80th and Vermont, but serves young people all over South LA. Under the COCO umbrella, they train youth organizers, help underserved scholars prepare for college, and work with students to help them gain admission to top universities. South Central Youth Empowered Through Action fosters teen activism, where young people have led campaigns moving tens of millions of dollars to South LA schools and forcing officials to make AP classes available to students in under-resourced institutions. SCL scholars have taken part in the March on Washington, been published in major news outlets, and been elected to city council. Long before she was mayor, Karen Bass started the program when she founded the Community Coalition. To donate, volunteer, or enroll a student in South Central Youth Empowered Through Action, please visit cocsouthla.org, cocsouthla.org. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. Giving you your daily dose of entertainment and celebrity news. You're inside the Rob the Report. Report. With Robin Ayers on KBLA Talk 1580. Well, let's go ahead and get right into it. I'm always excited when this young lady is on my line. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to talk with her today. Whitley Yates, you all know her. Uh, Whitley, it's so good to have you on to the Rob Report today. How are you? I'm great. I'm excited to be here. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And I I truly, truly love when you're on. Um, you know, the the thing that I always say is with, with all of our contributors is it's it's so great to have insightful people, people who make me think, people who pull out things. And I'm like, mm-hmm. huh, I never thought about that. And you do that very, very well. So I want to thank you for that. And um, you are the perfect person to really kind of start these conversations off with. Uh, I want to jump right into this Chris Rock story now it's being reported that chris rock is directing alongside steven spielberg this by the way normally would be a big deal (laughs) you know this in in by itself it can be considered a big deal however the news hit that they are reportedly directing this biopic of Martin Luther King Jr. And the reason that people are saying, "Up, oh, hold on a second. I don't know about, I don't know that Chris Rock is the guy." The reason is is that Chris Rock is known for um some of the things that he said in the past and some of the the n words that he has passed out. He has given passes out to white people in in the uh in the past. Now, I want to, before we move forward with this conversation and before I give you the microphone uh, to, you know, expound on this topic, Whitley, 
I want to, you know, let everybody know we will be playing a clip, and it does certainly have the N-word all up and through there, and I want you guys to hear it, and we're playing the word simply for context so you could understand why this angered so many people um, and why people have questions. And before we play this clip on Chris Rock, I want to also give you context there. He's sitting with uh, three other comedians who are all not black, okay? They they range from Jerry Seinfeld is in there. Um, there are several comedians there who are, again, who are, he's the only black man sitting there. Um, and he's, he's talking amongst these guys, and this is the conversation that happens uh, from, from when they're sitting there. He's the blackest white guy I know. And, I'm, and then all the, the negative things we think about black people, this you're saying I'm a nigger. Yes, you are the niggerest <laughs> white man I have ever. <laughs> oh, oh, amazing. I, I don't think he, he could do that. Oh, what? Uh, I don't think he has those There's qualities. There's only two. You, I, never I, found I mean, that no, you don't even understand. Really? You don't, you don't really know him. Like, I've use, worked with him. No, no, like you're a bit no. about. Uh, no. No. I wouldn't use it anywhere. No, exactly. These two, these two. We use say that nigger on stage. On stage. <laughs> You guys don't. That's a, yeah. It's, it's yeah, that's interesting. The two teams that's here. The difference yeah, that's between, like, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We, we say nigger on stage. You guys ways, don't. But that's definitely a pairing. Who, who we says say, nigger on stage? We don't. Well, you just yeah. did. Yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah. Okay. You and me say no, nigger not, in not, private. No. no. <laughs> these two guys. <laughs> <laughs> these two guys don't. I don't believe he says it in private. I'm much. giving it up just because it's play. I don't believe it's. I don't think you've ever said it probably in your life. No. 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 Yeah, that's it. That's a that huge difference between you and me, I think. Well, you found the humor of it. Yeah. I haven't found it. Right. Do Nor do that? I seek it. Right. I mean, so, so I'm going to find a way. Okay. So that is the clip, again, of Chris Rock sitting with a number of, of comedians, and they're all talking about the N word. And you hear a couple of other guys, one specifically, and I'm sorry, I don't know this, this comedian's name, but he's in dialogue initially with Chris Rock. And he says, Oh, so you, you say, basically, you're saying I am the N word. Chris Rock says, Yes, you are that. And Jerry F Seinfeld, the reason why people gave him props inside that whole dialogue there was Jerry Seinfeld said, I, I don't, see that he can say that basically I don't see how that applies I'm not the one I'm not saying it um, he refused to say it then uh, then the other comedian jumps in and says he also says the n-word he says he just doesn't say it on stage and they're they're joking about it so it's it's not just the fact that they're saying the word they're all laughing about it and here you got Chris Rock sitting there just it, it just felt really horrible with that being said, Whitley, now, I mean, I'm sure you've heard, seen the video. Um, for those of you who've not, now you've heard the video. Your your thoughts on the fact that, number one, you've seen this video, heard it, and you know that he is very possibly in talks to direct a Martin Luther King Jr. biopic. Um do the two not relate at all? Or do, do you see a problem with it as other people do? Or what are your thoughts on it? That's, it's a really interesting thought and concept that because Chris Rock doesn't value the black community in a way to protect it from racial slurs, that he can't direct the film. I think that's kind of what people are attempting to say. But what I would say is from Chris Rock directing head of state, and I think I love my wife, I just don't know if he has the level of gravitas uh, within his directing career to take on a feat like this. That's what mm -hmm. I'll say. Um, I don't. I think it's less about how he engages and interacts with other comedians and really more about his directing debut, what he has created outside of stand-up. He did his own stand-up, uh, the tambourine one. I think he did the Amy Schumer stand-up. Mm -hmm. But he's only really directed two episodes of I Think I Hate Chris. I Think I Hate Chris and head of state and i think i love my wife and i think maybe top five he may have been a director but i'd have to check on that so he really doesn't have the resume to produce the film mm. that that's my issue it's not whether or not i think that he would allow people to disrespect mlk because he allowed people to disrespect the black community 
It's that his resume doesn't speak to this type of a film. This is more of an Ava DuVernay, mm-hmm. Ryan Coogler, someone along those lines. Mm-hmm. I don't think even Spike Lee, his interpretation sure. or adaptation of this. But Chris Rock, I think he should stick to comedy and directing things that are comedic hmm. because I think he's a little bit out of his element here. Well, I mean, maybe that could be uh, th- that could be the the reason maybe they're saying, OK, well, we'll put you next to Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg, of course, you know, director. Uh, he's I mean, he. I don't I don't even know where yeah. he would rank, right? But he is he's obviously a, a great director, but maybe they're saying for the purpose of the look and the purpose of the film itself, maybe uh have Steven Spielberg there, but for context and for, you know, the black context, maybe that's why Chris Rock would be part. Um I'm not sure. Your thoughts on that? Like the fact that they would say, "Okay, well, maybe Chris Rock in, and you're right." And that's to Marcus's point. Marcus says is uh He's over here in YouTube. He says, is Chris Rock even a director? Well, to that point, wouldn't it be fair then, if we're looking at it from that scope, wouldn't it be fair to say, all right, well, yeah, you may not be, you may not have the resume or the cachet to uh, the director's cachet to film this or to direct this film, but so let's put you with somebody who is great. Uh, is that fair then? I So this is my own personal opinion. Mm-hmm. I think that we have a lot of movies about our history through the lens of people from outside of our community. And having Chris Rock as an oddity to Steven Spielberg, a top director, is yet another movie through the lens of an outsider of our community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think it's important that we tell our own stories. Yeah. Um. And so to have the lead director on a film about MLK in 2023 be someone from the community to me is vital. Like, it's very important. I don't just want an appendage. I don't want a garnish. I don't want an appetizer of a black director. I want a black director to direct. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, not to be the add on, Not, not to be the side piece. Yeah. The entree. Yeah. We need an entree director. I, I hear you. I agree. And I actually respect that point of view. Um, I had not even heard the argument of that point of view. When people, you know, I often, all the time, actually, I look at stories. I pull stories from everywhere. I look at everything. <laughs> and I, I read stories from, from all kinds of um all kinds of platforms um, from social media, of course, other blogs, uh, news outlets, all kinds of things. But what I I love to read the articles. I love to read stories. However, I really pay attention to what is the climate, right? What are what are the people saying? And you know, a lot of the times, obviously, you can't put too much into what the people say because you know, hey, I mean, people are are fickle, and people have a tendency to ride with. Whomever is saying the the best thing, whoever is saying the, you know, the most trendy thing. So, yeah, that sounds about right. So I'm going to ride on top of that. So you can't always trust the comment section. But from what I'm reading, I've not I've not seen that. I've not seen people say, well, you know what? Chris Rock isn't even a director, so I wouldn't trust, you know, the direction of this movie in his hands. It's more so the fact that to 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 direct a film about someone who who we deem as such a leader uh, uh, such a historical mm-hmm. figure for us and what what MLK means to us um, to put it in the hands of Chris Rock and uh, again alongside Steven Spielberg well can we trust Chris Rock in the sense of like does he even care does he even um, maybe care that maybe that's not the the right word but is he um, is he the right the right choice for this because of cho- of of the choices that he's made in his past regarding the 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 n word? I'll say this right now. There's a, a letter 
where uh, MLK had written in 1966, where he's talking about the N word. You can read it. You can read it. Um, there's different things that you can read about what he says about it. But to know that Chris Rock is out here handing it out like candy, because he's even said in that clip, he says, you know what? I kind of gave up. He, he pretty much gave up on the fight, gave up on, you know, trying to trying to stand up for the N word, trying to trying to stand up against anybody who would use the word. He kind of gave up on it. So do we trust somebody like Chris Rock to go ahead and and uh, and direct this film, knowing that it's about someone who we deem so um, such a leader to us? I think the idea that we're even questioning our trust for him is symbolic of where we are in his ability to execute. A hundred percent. <laughs> if we even have to side eye and ask the question <laughs> about whether or not he's the right person, I think we, we already know the answer. <laughs> we are at a deficit. We're all thinking it, but yeah. someone said it. Yeah, man, you are right about Listen. that. That's a that's a great point. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. Um, I, I want to read a lot of these comments that are inside of our YouTube that people are are speaking about right now. I'm going to definitely do that on the other side because I don't want to end the conversation quite yet. But I do want to, when we come forward, get to this conversation about our dear sister, Kayla Nicole. Now, I don't know her personally. Kayla Nicole, as I explained at the top of the hour, is a young woman who used to date this white NFL player who is now, they were dating somewhere for around five years or so on and off again. And now he is dating a white woman in that Taylor Swift is this woman, but she's not just a white woman. She's like a billionaire white woman. So Kayla Nicole has been receiving all kinds of unfair comparisons she's been receiving I mean she's been trolled all over the past several weeks and um, it's unfair but she's speaking up about it right now so I definitely want to get to that on the other side of course we're going to keep Whitley Yates around because she is just that awesome and right now we've got our news traffic in sports you are listening to the Raw Report on KBLA Talk 1580 What's going on? What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Denzel Whitaker, and I'm on the Raw Report. More of, More of the, Raw the Raw Report with Robin Ayers when we come forward. I'm Amber Payton. Here's the latest on the Black Information Network. There's a new law in effect in California specifically for black youth. Governor Gavin Newsom has signed Senate Bill 673, also known as the Ebony Alert Law, to prioritize the search for when a black youth goes missing in the area. The alert will be sent out to radio, television, social media, and other alert systems to spread awareness of the missing person. The Ebony Alert applies to missing black people who are between the ages of 12 to 25. St. Louis Mayor Tashara Jones says newly appropriated federal grant money will make a big impact on the city. The St. Louis Community Development Administration allocated $26 million to support social services, improve infrastructure, and create affordable housing. Mayor Jones, who is black, says the investment shows the city's commitment to economic justice. Jones says safe, affordable housing for families creates stronger communities. That's the latest. I'm Amber Payton on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network. An accident in Glendale is in the right lane of the 134 West at Pacific Avenue, still causing stop traffic flow from Glendale. Two middle lanes in Buena Park remain occupied with an accident on the 91 West and Knott Avenue with stop traffic coming from Magnolia Avenue over 32 minutes. As we make our way through Anaheim, watch for an hour's worth of heavy delays on the 91 East between Highway 57 and Green River Road. Then westbound at Lemon Street, an accident is currently blocking the carpool lane while heavy traffic continues from Glassell Street, Kramer Boulevard Interchange. And in Hollywood, an accident's been reported on the right shoulder of the 101 North before Melrose Avenue and watch for heavy traffic from Vermont. Seems like COVID's everywhere again, but there's good news from Pfizer. This season's updated COVID-19 shots are now available for ages six months and up, and they're designed to better protect against recent variants. Ask your pharmacist or doctor and schedule at vaccines.gov. Sponsored by Pfizer. Is this, the this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. I'm a bad man. 
The Rams traded wide receiver Van Jefferson, a key contributor to their Super Bowl championship team in 2021. Jefferson was sent to the Atlanta Falcons in exchange for draft picks in 2025. The emergence of rookie Puka Nakua and second-year receiver Tutu Atwell led the Rams to move Jefferson. Jefferson had only eight catches this season. The Dodgers have won 100 games in each of the last two regular seasons, but they have a five-game losing streak in the playoffs. They face a must-win situation Wednesday at Phoenix in Game 5 of their National League playoff series against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Colorado coach Deion Sanders said two-way star Travis Hunter will play in Friday's Pac-12 conference game against Stanford. Hunter has been out since September 16th after suffering a lacerated liver in the Colorado State game. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson on KBLA Talk 1580. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Boldly taking talk radio where it has never gone before. New vistas, new voices, new views, new visions, new victories. We're KBLA Talk 1580, and we're taking public media black. Black, black, black. Happy birthday, Metro K-Line. Whether traveling for business or pleasure, it's time you made today a K-Line day. The K-Line can connect you with fun, food, friends, and family from Crenshaw to Inglewood in one safe, clean, comfortable ride. Take the K-Line today and experience the diversity that makes L.A. such a great place to live, work, and play. Make it a K-Line day. Go Metro. Visit metro.net slash K-Line. The Los Angeles Urban League helps African American and others in underserved communities achieve true social parity, economic self-reliance, and civil rights. For over 100 years, Los Angeles Urban League has ensured our communities have access to careers with living wages, opportunities to start and grow businesses, and clear pathways to personal and professional growth. Programs like BizCamp, Construction Career Academy, Bob Business Ready and B-Warp, The Black Wealth Attainment and Retention Program are examples of the ongoing events designed to make our centennial mission to rebuild Black Wall Street right here in L.A. a reality. To sign up for our newsletter or to support the Los Angeles Urban League with your time, talent, and donations, visit laul.org. That's laul.org. The Los Angeles Urban League is a proud sponsor of Urban Family Focus, Saturdays at 7 a.m. on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. KBLA Talk 1580 joins you in standing for voting rights. When We All Vote is a leading national nonpartisan initiative on a mission to change the culture around voting and to increase participation in each and every election by helping to close the race and age gap. Created by Michelle Obama, When We All Vote brings together individuals, institutions, brands, and organizations to register new voters across the country and advance civic education for the entire family and voters of every age to build an informed and engaged electric for today and generations to come. When We All Vote empowers their supporters and volunteers to take action through voting, advocating for their rights, and holding their elected officials accountable. Please visit whenweallvote.org to stand up for your rights, voting rights. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. What's really going on? Who's got next? And what not to miss in entertainment? You're listening to the Raw Report, Raw Report. on KBLA Talk 1580. 1580. 1580. Welcome, welcome on in here. We are talking Chris Rock, 
possibly directing this MLK biopic? We don't know. There's a lot of people that say, I do not think so. He is not the right guy. And of course, Andy, DJ A+, plus, he on the, he's on the ones and twos. I don't know if that's how they even say it anymore. But he is the DJ bringing in that Taylor Swift of of course, because we are going to hop into that conversation in just one moment. Um, right now, we have our contributor with us here on the line. This is Whitley Yates. Always incredible to talk with you, Whitley. Um, I, I, before we move on, I wanted to get to a few of these uh, these comments over in the, in the YouTube comment section where you guys are saying... Um, you're just someone who said this. Someone said Marcus Atkins says I would take Tyler Perry over Chris Rock. <laughs> now, Too far. yeah, doesn't <laughs> shots fired? Okay, uh, Stephen has enough money and power to be able to say no if it was a situation he wasn't sure about. Lavelle D- uh, Delone, thank you for that. Uh, mm-hmm. Andrea J says, are they trying to play Chris Rock as devil's advocate? Chris Rock doesn't mm-hmm. think much of the black community. He doesn't think much of the black well, community. Well, I, right. Uh, Lavelle says, uh, then they should have chosen a different director for Color Purple if that's the case. Y'all over here dropping bars. Um, mm. Maybe they're trying to give Chris Rock a wake-up call. I, we, we just don't know. We just don't know. Um, with all of this being said, I, I'm just not sure. Um, number one, First of all, of course, I love everything MLK. I would I would definitely love to see something like that. However, I'm not sure if we are um, where people sit with that. Would you like to see something else with MLK? We've seen a number of movies and characters who are playing him. Um, are you are you kind of over it? Are you would you be interested in seeing something like this? I think I could see another MLK movie. I think one that focuses just kind of wholly on his life and his journey. We usually only get the civil rights aspect and yeah. element, but I think if it were to tell the story of him, almost like an origin story, mm-hmm. I think that people would be interested in it. But once again, we're in a place where owning our own art and telling our stories through our own perspectives and lenses is very important. So I would challenge anyone from outside of the community that's creating art within the community to provide ample opportunities for people within the community to create and tell those stories. Hmm. Well said. Well, that is where we will wrap that conversation up. Now, let's go ahead and get into this Kayla Nicole Taylor Swift uh, I don't even want to do the comparison. First of all, I'll be clear about that. There is no comparison. I think it's really unfair to both of these women. But right now we're talking about Kayla Nicole. She is a um, a Pepperdine University educated woman. She is beautiful. She's a stunningly beautiful woman. She is a model. Um, she's into her fitness. And she graduated in broadcast journalism. So she does hosting and reporting and all of these things. And she was with NFL Kansas City uh, Chiefs tight end. He's a, a okay. <laughs> are you over? Are you over Travis Kelsey, <laughs> Andy? <laughs> no, okay. You you don't feel one way or another about it. Um, well, she was with him for five years, off and on, and they looked like they had a nice relationship. However, they did uh, come to an end, unfortunately or fortunately, however that works. Uh, at the at the top of the of the year and um, or the latter part of last year, top of this year. Well, there have been reports that he was interested in Taylor Swift. And, you know, we know how it goes. People pick up on it and and they run with it. And finally, we get to see Taylor Swift is at a football game with his mom. She's in the suites with his mom. She actually is walking with Travis after the game so people put it together they're like oh, okay well he finally got Taylor Swift right well the internet unleashed one way or another they're on two completely different ends of the spectrum one one would say one large Taylor Swift fan base says oh my gosh Taylor Swift and Travis we love it we are here for it and he upgraded with Taylor Swift because here she is this billionaire we know the Swifties if that's what you call them the Swifties she has a very large fan base and so uh, that's sort of saying 
Beyonce, right? Or that's so saying like a Nicki Minaj or something. You know, people who have these large fan bases, that's who Taylor Swift has in her corner. So with that being said, all the Swifties or people who are liking this uh, this relationship, this it, what seems to be an official relationship between Taylor and Travis, they've been coming at his ex-girlfriend, Kayla Nicole. She's a black woman. She's curvy. Um, she, she's beautiful. But, you know, they are... They're pretty much looking at the surface level of both of these women, and they are completely uh, trolling Kayla and saying, you know, he upgraded since he left you, and um, you're nowhere near her net worth. All of the things. All of the things. And it really upsets me. I want to play for you, Whitley, if you've not heard it, or anyone else who've not who's not heard it. Kayla, who's been... Tro- she's been being trolled over the past several weeks. She finally came and spoke out and she wrote a letter. It's a three minute plus long <laughs> length uh, video, so we won't play it all. But let's get to a little bit just so you can hear the gist of what she's saying. Let's take a listen. Hey, guys, Kayla here. It's always been really important for me to use my platform not to create division, but to elevate and unite women, black women specifically. So I prepared a letter and would like to share it with you today. Dear black girl, they may call you a traitor for falling in love. You'll hope the ones closest will protect you, but you will quickly find out that people don't protect what they don't value. They'll say you're too much, too provocative, too boisterous, too outspoken, and in the same breath tell you that you're not enough, not successful enough, not wholesome enough, maybe not even intelligent enough. They'll say you deserve the backlash and embarrassment because of your blackness, you should have known better. They'll even try to tie your value to your net worth. But black girl, please remember your value lies elsewhere. Your value is deep within your heart, the way you love, the way you give. Your value is in your resilience, your willingness to forgive. The way you protect what means most to you, even if it hurts you along the way and the way you stand up for what means most to you, even though they may not ever do the same. But black girl, respectfully, let me stop you there because you don't have to participate in this tumultuous, often one-sided journey. Preserve your heart. Even when they try to quantify your character and test your boundaries, you do not have to engage. Okay. You do not have to- All right. You can see where this, le- she is, she's so eloquent in the way she comes across and it seems so sincere. And this is a letter primarily to black women. Um, She, she was in a situation dating this white man who is a a known uh, figure for years. And now she is literally receiving all this backlash because of it. So, Whitley, just give me your overall thoughts on this situation, this whole comparison, them, them trolling her. And then another question that I have and I'm going to put this up in the poll as well, but did she sort of set herself up from the start? Like, Mm. as she's saying, she's like, listen, Mm. they're going to try to, uh, because you fell in love, you know, they're going to say you're a traitor just because you fell in love and you could have fallen in love with someone who's not black. And did she set herself up from the very beginning? So as a black woman, do you automatically set yourself up for backlash when you're dating a white man? Your thoughts? This is this is a lot to digest. Yeah. Because my algorithms were not hating on Kayla. They were saying, how could you go from Taylor Swift to Kayla? So my algorithms were algorithming because it was the opposite where I saw a lot of hate going towards Taylor saying, like, you would never leave this and go to that. Mm. Um, I think it's a very interesting – I think that race does play – a very pivotal role in how people reacted. I think that there were a lot of people within the black community that specifically women that were upset that Kayla um, and him didn't work out. He ended up going to Taylor because you know what they say, once you go black, you don't go back. Mm. So I think that there was that type of a sentiment. And then I think from the other side, the Swifties and people that follow Taylor, they didn't want the hate and were just utilizing what they could because obviously it wasn't the body, yaddy, yaddy. They had to utilize her bank account 
yes. to be able to have a one up. Yeah. Where Kayla, I think where she went wrong was she tried to do what um, some better women do and tried to give Taylor this heads up like, you know, I wouldn't be a girl's girl if I didn't say once a cheater, always a cheater. Mm. Like nobody asked you for that, sis. <laughs> you guys have broken up. He has moved on. Nobody asked you for, you know, your story of victimization from this man. Mm -hmm. Allow Taylor to get victimized and drop another amazing album. The Swifties know what's going on. Mm -hmm. They already know the deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she will fall in love. It will be great. It will end. She will write a phenomenal album and go on tour. They already know <laughs> what's happening. And I think Caleb kind of put herself in the line of fire by giving too much detail on social media about her experience. Like, well, I would just say, look out, what's a cheater, always a cheater. And I had to go to therapy and all of the the little shots that she was taking, which then I believe even further propelled her into the crossfires of this. Very interesting. Well, I know there's another woman who uh, sort of entered the chat, if you will. There's another ex or uh Allegedly, this is another black woman who uh, is his ex, and she's saying that um, she had these relationships and she's now being trolled as well. She is, um, you know, receiving death threats from the Swifties and all of these things. Uh, you know, it's just interesting. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know what I don't know if that's something that you try to throw in there because you're like, oh, me too. I'm I'm in the conversation, too. Or if this is really legitimate and I don't mean to to uh, make light of of that situation if that's in fact what she mm -hmm. is receiving um but you know these days people do things for all kinds of reasons clout is really at an all-time high so uh it may it does make you question everything you know unfortunately until you see receipts right um but you know i i agree with you and i'm not trying to say that i didn't see any of the love for for kayla nicole there are tons of people who are saying whoa like she is a baddie, you know, and I, and I and I actually don't like that. I don't like that people would just look at her, her physical form and say, you uh -huh. downgraded to Taylor Swift just because Kayla Nicole looks like she does. You know, that 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 is really uh -huh. that is really, uh, you know, that's a. That's that's low that's low hanging fruit in my opinion. Yeah. You know, you really got to look at it's it's very shallow. You got to look at someone's intellect. You have to look at someone's per someone who their their soul. <laughs> you know, if you don't know this person, you really okay. can't speak on a situation one way or the other. And so, um, it, it's just like looking at Taylor Swift's bank account and saying that you upgraded because Come of her, her finances. I mean, I think either way, it's just really like you mentioned, it's a shallow uh, thing to say, and it it's is low hanging fruit. And I think that for people to reach in either way, it's just ridiculous. But I will say that I'm happy that Kayla Nicole, it sounds almost like she's she's written this letter to herself, like it's a mere reflection. Right. But she's also writing it to other black women and saying, listen, you know, no matter who it is that you fall in love with, I know specifically she's kind of like slanting this towards, you know, her own situation, which is she's she had fallen in love with the white man. But um, it's, it's just unfortunate all the way around. And to uh, to Marcus's point, he basically said that he hopes that she finds or excuse me, this is Lavelle that says, I pray she's able to find peace and tranquility in the midst of this man made storm created by evil people she's done nothing to deserve this fool foolishness i say that to her i also say that about taylor swift you know what i'm saying uh, these are just people who are trying to live their lives and date and move on with their lives and so um it's unfortunate but we have got to end it right there because you already know that's the way this sh that's the way the the show moves on it moves on very very quickly whitley so um I truly appreciate you, as always, for joining in on The Raw Report. And can you please let everybody know where to find you online? Yes, you guys can find me at Whitley J. Yates on Instagram and Whitley J. Yates on Twitter. Well, we appreciate you, Whitley J. Yates, and I'm looking forward to the next time. All right, it's been a pleasure. Enjoy your night. Well, when we come forward, uh, we'll get to the rest of The Raw Report on the other side. You are listening to KBLA Talk 1580. Stay there. Yo, what's going on? It's your boy Eric Bellinger hanging out right here with my family at The Raw Report. Keep it locked. You're inside The Raw Report with Robin Ayers on KBLA Talk 1580.
J.P. Morgan Chase is building on the investments in California and around the country to help close the racial wealth gap and build a more equitable future. As part of J.P. Morgan Chase commitment, they are taking action to help improve financial wealth and access to banking in the Black community, helping more people open low-cost checking and savings accounts, hosting community seminars with supporting Black-led institutions by building awareness about financial investments, hiring community managers, and opening community center branches like Crenshaw, Inglewood, and downtown L.A. Visit today jpmorganchase.com slash racial equity. Again, jpmorganchase.com slash racial equity. Get the tools to help reach your financial goals. Visit today jpmorganchase.com slash racial equity. Again, jpmorganchase.com slash racial equity. Only one in five people with autism are employed, despite many having the skill set and desire to work. Maybe it's because employers don't know what kind of jobs they can do. Like, what about a programmer? That's a job for someone with autism. Uh, how about a healthcare worker? Yep. That is too. People with autism can do a lot of different jobs, but often get overlooked due to outdated stigmas. Introducing WIN by Autism Speaks. We help businesses lead the way in inclusive hiring. What about a ranch hand? To learn more, go to autismspeaks.org slash WIN. We're celebrating one year of the K. From checking out the vibrant art and diverse dining in Lamert Park to cheering on your favorite team in Inglewood, you can choose your own adventure when you ride the Metro K Line. Leave the car at home and go Metro. Visit Metro.com. Net slash K line. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Talk about. KBLA Talk 1580 joins you in standing for education as a right, not a privilege. Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science is a private, nonprofit, community founded, student centered university committed to cultivating diverse health profession leaders who are dedicated to social justice and health equity for underserved populations. CDU does this through outstanding education, clinical service, and community engagement. Recently, Charles Drew University made history by opening only the fifth medical school at an historically black university. Congratulations, South LA, and congratulations to the dean of the medical school, Dr. Deborah Protho Stith. CDU is now training doctors and providing $90 million in annual economic benefit to Watts and surrounding neighborhoods. To apply for medical school, get more information, or sign your child up for the Junior Doctors Saturday School Program, visit cdrewu.edu. That's cdrewu.edu. At KBLA, we are dedicated to equity in education and ending health care apartheid. And we don't black down. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. Giving you your daily dose of entertainment and celebrity news. You're inside the Robert the Report. Report. With Robin Ayers on KBLA Talk 1580. 1580. 1580. Uh, okay, before we get to our Who's Got Next, I did want to play for you a an open mic and since i don't see this person on youtube tonight or joining in let's go ahead and play this open mic for her instead <laughs> hi my name is mimi from jacksonville florida i just wanted to say i love kbla talk 1580 you don't black down i listen <laughs> and watch y'all on your kbla youtube channel and app i sometimes listen to you on my tune in radio app Lately, I have not. We appreciate you Hi, so much, my name Mimi. Is Mimi Davis from Jacksonville, oh, Florida. Oh, this is Mimi again. And I just want to say I love the Raw Report. Oh, well, we love, love you Robin too. Ayer's show, it's Mimi. great. It's wonderful content. It's entertaining. It's educational, and it's just fun. Oh. So I just wanted to leave this message and say I love the Robin Ayers Raw Report. Well, Mimi, we appreciate you and we love you as well. Thank you so much. Um, Shout out to Mimi for the open mic. You guys can use the open mic feature on our app as well. Let's go ahead and get into this uh, Who's Got Next. You guys know her. She is big in other places but still needs to get a little bit more on the rise here in the States. This is Thames. Early in the morning, late at night. It don't even matter what time it is. Presidential roller, RM, wait. Whenever I find time, it's okay. ATL, Jacob, ATL, Jacob. You pray for my demons, girl, I got you. Every time I sip on, I get vulnerable. 
Annoying the sounds of the storm when it comes. She understand I can't take her everywhere I'm going. I've been in the field like the children of the corn. I can hear your tears when they drop over the phone. Get mad at yourself cause you can't leave me alone. Gossip been missing, it ain't what we doing. Traveling around the world. Over the phone, dropping tears. I get my bonnet when I do this. When you drunk, you tell me exactly how you feel. So, yes, Tim's, Tim's, a uh, beautiful young woman and uh, on the rise here in in America. We love her, though. We love her. You guys may or may not know about her, but she is. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Her her voice is beautiful. Um, Fahima, you are actually being requested to. We, people want to hear more about you, <laughs> about what you have to say about Chris Rock and him attempting anything black. Well, uh, maybe we can hear from Fahima sometime this week. Of course, you guys remember, I will not be here Thursday, October 12th. That is my birthday. Thank you so much. Andy, I thought I was going to have all the whist- the bells and whistles. and. The- <laughs> Okay, well, it's all right. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Anyway, I will not be here. I will be here tomorrow, however, and I will be here Friday as well. We are going to get the party back started. Um, What I don't want you to miss, though, October 13th, it is coming to Prime, Amazon Prime. That's this film that I I really, I've not heard much about it, and... But it's Jamie Foxx and Tommy Lee. Anything that they're involved in, I want to see. This film is uh, it's inspired by true events. It's called The Burial, starring Jamie Foxx again, Tommy Lee Jones. That's coming October 13th to Prime. Like I said, I am a fan of Jamie Foxx and actually of Tommy Lee Jones as well. So whatever they've got coming, I want to view. Uh, definitely thank you guys. I want to appreciate all of you for such a wonderful show and for the engagement. Thank you so much for the likes on our YouTube page um, and our YouTube video for today. I'm looking. Thank you, guys. I see you. Thank you so much for the love. Marcus, go ahead and send an email. <laughs> send an email. <laughs> uh, every, so, so I hear so many times that the Rob Report should be longer. You know, I enjoy this hour with you guys. I definitely do. But you already know what's coming up next and who is coming up next. It is Zoe Williams, the voice of reason, coming with a fire show, as he always does. Um, So I appreciate you guys. And let's do it again tomorrow. Remember, today and every day forward to be a blessing. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. I'm Amber Payton. Here's the latest on the Black Information Network.